So here's a game that I thought I was never going to talk about because I assumed it was dead. This game was announced back in 2016, almost four years ago. Back then it was kind of a game that really didn't interest me because it just looked like another generic, like Dave Infamy kind of shooter. And so I focused on my efforts on Hell Let Loose and Postscriptum. So I kind of just blew off and listed at the time. And since then, they have been relatively quiet until about a few days ago when they posted a new video. They kind of got me a bit confused because in the beginning they showed off what I can only describe as an off-brand battle royale game that transitions backward in time to when Enlisted takes place. I was very confused about that beginning part that I just had to look it up. Turns out they weren't as quiet as I initially thought. They just switched priorities and made a battle royale with the same assets as Enlisted as a joke. So that game's a troll. I'm confused what their plan is with that game. Uh... Did they just release it like for fun as like a like a social fucking not social like a science experiment? I think the game could be actually kind of cool, but they put this weird fucking spin on it that just makes it super troll. Yeah, what started out as an April Fool's joke actually turned into something serious. From what I understand, the point of Cuisine Royale, which is the name of, you know, that thing, it was to promote Enlisted, but it became its own thing as soon as it received a lot of criticism. And so they've been making money off of that through microtransactions. That's right, microtransactions. For those of you that don't know, the people that are behind Enlisted are Gaijin Games. These are the guys that created uh, War Thunder, and it really shows when you're playing inside of a vehicle. But yeah, this kind of worries me, and I'll get back to it later on down the line, but let's talk about Enlisted itself. So what is Enlisted? According to the website, Enlisted is an MMO squad-based shooter which is built around some of the most important and famous episodes from World War II. In Enlisted, players can experience these famous battles on a massive scale through the real heroes of those encounters. In some modes, players won't be fighting alone on the battlefield. They will be leading their own squads of AI-controlled soldiers. This will grant a unique scale to combat engagements with up to 100 Hundreds of soldiers fighting simultaneously will be held on different fields of battle with maps up to hundreds of square kilometers. This is a game that's apparently using the latest dagger engine. I'm really not familiar with this engine, but I'm assuming it's the one that's used on War Thunder. It says here what it's going to be used for to calculate huge detailed spaces, dynamic water and skies while using physically based render. Whatever that means, Durag is dumbass. Please explain. Over here it talks about team play. The correct evaluation of actions with consideration of the current situation situation on the battlefield. Weapon and character capabilities, all of these will be essential parts of Enlisted. Players will gradually unlock new characters who will all have different playstyles. Additional diversities in the battlefield will also be granted by a wide weaponry selection, just like in a real war, where you rarely can see two absolutely identical rifles. Weapons in Enlisted can have their own features and their own history. So this kind of has like a combination between team play and character unlockables, interesting. They say here that popular World War II battles will be present in Enlisted in separate campaigns. To recreate each of these battles requires not only the creation of a separate content like new locations, characters, weapons, and vehicles. It also requires a huge amount of work on creating the game rules and balance in them. This is why each campaign will be developed separately from each other. All the screenshots that are shown here are taken from the pre-alpha version of the game. So this pre-alpha that they're talking about here must have been different from what they showed off because some of the pictures that are on the website weren't featured in the build that we played. Yeah, ours was a little different it seems. Also, you had to sign up for this too. So, the same day that I realized that this game still existed was the same day that I realized that I had to sign up for the, I guess you would call it early access build. And there was a bit of complications of me trying to get on that, but I finally got into it. And that only lasted for like a day before they shut everything down. Like, from what I understand, they never actually gave us a time frame as to how long it was supposed to be. They only told us when it was going to start. I don't call me on that i could be wrong but uh i just found it really odd how short it was i mean i think they said something along the lines of depending on how much people are actually interested in the game they'll go through with it at least that's what i heard i don't know if that's true or not though you don't call me on that so when i played i believe they only had just the germans and the russians which is different from what they showed off on the uh website because i saw americans in there but i didn't see any americans when i was playing which isn't a big deal but it kind of felt like false advertisement but you know it's whatever so in the build that i played the game gives you 
three different squads. One's infantry, one's recon, and one is a tank squad. Each squad has four AIs in it that basically follow you anywhere that you go or do whatever you command. So this game has a lot more AIs in it than it does actual players in each match that you play. So it seems as if there's at least 10 players on each team times that by four is how many people are actually in the game. And these battles are like really close. So they could get really chaotic. It's honestly just a meat grinder is what it is. But uh, yeah, the way that it works with the AI is kind of like the old brothers in arms games where you're, you know, you're commanding your guys to go around. But at the same time, it adds a bit of that, you know, first mission from Battlefield 1 where you can switch to your AI buddy if you die. I found myself using it as a cheat system. Like as soon as I died, I knew exactly where he shot me, switched to the other guy, point that direction and shot him and kept moving on. But you could also do it simultaneously if you're still alive because you want to do that in certain situations, like switch to another one of your AIs so that you can actually do stuff for a certain situation. Like say there's an enemy tank. Oh my God, there's an enemy tank. So I press double Y until I get to the guy that has uh, an explosive that can blow up tanks. And then I throw it at the tank. There's also a radio guy that you can switch to and you could call in like mortar strikes with that radio guy and a couple of other guys that do other things. It's pretty neat. So that's how the AI system works. But the problem with it is that the AI isn't actually that smart. I mean, sure, if they're getting shot at, they'll shoot back. But like I order them to stay in a specific spot so they won't, you know, they could take cover. Like I, I told them to go inside of a bunker so they could look outside the bunker and shoot from there. But they end up going on top of the bunker and just get shot up. Also, there was a time when I was walking out, I get shot and killed. And I'm just watching my screen like look up and you can see the other AI walk up on top of my body. He gets shot. Another AI comes out and walks on top of my body. He gets shot. And then the last one comes out. He gets shot. It's like, oh, this AI. I think it's a really cool idea, but they seriously need to make the AI a little smarter than that. Like, there should be like a like a common sense sort of knowledge. Like, oh snap, the first guy got shot. Maybe I shouldn't go out there, you know? Anytime that you're moving with your AI, the AI should always be able to, you know, take cover. But from what I played, they just didn't do anything of the sort. So I seriously hope that they fix the AI so that they're a little smarter, you know? They want to keep moving forward, but they're trying to avoid getting hit, you know? So that's what I think about the AI. They're basically below average. The gameplay itself is actually not that bad. It feels very responsive, although it is a bit on the arcadey side. Like, I think the best way to describe it is kind of like Insurgency 2014, where they walk a fine line between arcadey and tactical. I've also had a bunch of subscribers who played it with me and told me that it was very reminiscent of Heroes and Generals. Like, even the menu screens look a lot like it, too. And the tank gameplay is very reminiscent of War Thunder, although there is a giant difference, and that difference is that there are actually four people in the tank that you could control. You got the gunner, the machine gunner, the driver, and the um, guy that can pop out of the hatch. If you pop out of the hatch with that guy, he could get shot out. Also, if a tank shell hits your tank and kills two people, then you could still drive the tank because you have a full squad of four and there's still two other people that are alive, depending on where the enemy tank hits you. It seems as if they could have a lot of tanks on the field. I noticed that there was like a crap ton of tanks that were just dead on the roadway, which is kind of cool that they leave the carcasses. If you wanted to just hop out of the tank, you could hop out of the tank too and fight with your pistols or rifles if you upgrade your guys. Hopping out of your tank is actually pretty good for getting stuck in an area you can't move or if it takes about to go down can't say that i really liked it but i really didn't get a whole lot of time to grasp the controls in a tank so i'm not entirely sure if it's good or not i would have definitely liked to play some more but unfortunately they shut it down before i could you know look more into it i'd have known that it was going to be that short then i would have you know tried more so the interesting thing about this game is that after every time that you play the game you receive these points and these points are used to unlock certain things for each squad like you could upgrade their weapons or get new gear it gives you a lot of incentive to keep playing the game when it came to game modes in this i only was able to play two i'm not entirely sure how many there actually is in this game but as far as i know there is a push mode where you're basically pushing on an objective capturing and then pushing onwards and a domination mode so just just regular standard modes nothing crazy about them at least not yet the game itself actually ran pretty well i felt that it was like really optimized like i really didn't run into any issues and i was talking with uh, like at least three other subscribers that were playing it and they said that they didn't run into any issues so i mean not bad my only issue is maybe um just the fact that the guns didn't really have any recoil like they kind of basically felt like lasers uh the movement was a bit floaty for me like i was running and then i would like just go up a wall like i'm kind of like running and then i just kind of like slide when i try to stop that's what it kind of feels like like a bit floaty but yeah aside from that this game is actually better than i thought it was going to be like I, like i honestly thought it was going to be like another day of infamy clone but it actually takes a step further with adding ai squads 
squads and you know vehicles that are very reminiscent of uh, War Thunder and each members of the squads have their like own abilities you know it's a bit more creative than I initially thought but I just hope that they take the game modes a bit further and do you know more creative stuff with that because it just felt very bland to me I mean they for sure have something here I just hope that they improve on it and uh, yeah that's pretty much the game so uh, let's go ahead and talk about some concerns that I have with the game and the first one that I have is that it's trying to get itself into a market that's already oversaturated with World War II games which I honestly don't know how it's going to fare but this is my second problem that I have with the game it's more than likely that this game is going to be free to play because if you guys don't know the people that are making the game are Gaijin Games and Gaijin Games has had a track record of having free to play games and using microtransactions in each of those games and that money flows faster than any other you know regular game without microtransactions it's just an objective fact so even if they're in like a saturated market they could definitely rise above the fray because you know most likely it's going to be a free to play game and they have the funding to keep pumping out those um, advertisements for the game free to play is working pretty well for heroes in general so I mean I'm just saying now listen I hate microtransactions but this is a certain situation where free to play actually needs microtransactions like it makes more sense to have it in this type of game than a $60 game you know what I'm saying and to me when I played this game it actually felt like a full-fledged game but I think my biggest issue is that they are most likely going to force you to try and buy something in order to progress in the game if we are to go off the previous games like War Thunder they did that they added in things that actually changed gameplay if you bought certain things like if you wanted good stuff you just had to buy it right then and there with real world money or deal with the grind now just to be clear it is not confirmed that this game is going to be free to play I went onto their website to see if there was an actual answer for that and this is all it says we ran a survey and it showed that the vast majority of our players prefer a free-to-play approach this has influenced the game development process significantly such as a change in the distribution model also requires a change in the design this is why it will take some time for us to prepare and implement new goals to adapt them to a new distribution model so that right there is telling me that this is going to be a free-to-play game which again is not a bad thing okay because from what I played it's actually pretty fun from everybody that I you know talk to they all seem to like it it's just if they do free to play I hope that they only just you know make it so that you can buy just cosmetics but looking at their other games it says otherwise so uh yeah that's pretty much enlisted it's a good game that will most likely go free to play but is not confirmed yet so what are your thoughts on enlisted is this something that you're gonna try out I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna get too you know too much into it not that I hate it or anything it's just you know maybe not my type of game but uh if you guys would like to see more gameplay of this let me know down below it definitely is an interesting twist on the uh world war ii genre i would say but yeah if you're someone that likes the fact that i cover tactical games like this be sure to like share and comment down below if you're someone that's new be sure to subscribe and ding the bell if you're someone that would like to support the channel be sure to check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye